Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Gives me huge pleasure this afternoon to welcome to the table Nick Dizon, President, CEO, and everything else of Nidon Clean Energy. Nick and I go back longer than we either of us would uh, care to confess. <laughs> Suffice to say that when it comes to clean technology, Nick is not just on the cutting edge, he is the proverbial tip of the spear. Today we're going to look at two of his new technologies, Simplify Energy and... What's the other one? SunTrack. SunTrack. It's not just solar cooling and it's going to, you're, you're going to have your socks blown off by this. So welcome to the program. Nick. Thanks, Howard. Yeah. So let's uh, talk first about the Simplify batteries. Why are they called Simplify? And they are unlike any other battery on the market, I believe? Pretty yeah. much. The, mm -hmm. uh, the only comparison that comes close to them previously was the Aquion batteries, mm -hmm. and Aquion filed for Chapter 11 about three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. the, the difference being is there's a criteria that we look for in batteries. Number one is that there's not a penalty for 100% discharge, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we want a minimum of 3,000 plus cycles because the only way for energy storage to have value is to pay for itself, and the only way it pays for itself mm -hmm. is if you discharge the battery heavily every day. Mm -hmm. um, we're the only one of the few groups maybe in the world that's actually doing energy storage for both commercial and residential with a return on investment of five to seven years or less. Yeah, and let, let me clarify that a little bit. You batteries don't come cheap, so you've you've got to reap. You got to get your money back, and in this case, it would be day after day after day. Say you're uh, renting a hotel room. The way you get your money back on a hotel room is by hopefully renting that room every day. The more days in the year that you rent, the better your return. In this case, the more days that you can cycle all the way down, meaning you start off with at 100% energy and you get pretty darn close to zero, then, then that's one day, then you recharge, get down to zero. That's the way you get your return on investment. Correct. Yeah. And the beauty of these <clears throat> batteries is that Depending on the customer situation, every design is different. You can't look at five houses or five businesses and have the same mm. design. Simplified batteries, the simplify means they're easy to use. And the way that they're easy to use is they have a high amperage draw capability per individual battery. They're wired in parallel. Without getting overly technical, mm -hmm. um, design-wise, these batteries are easy to work with and they are, they're difficult to hurt. Mm -hmm. uh, lead acid batteries, you can kill them pretty quickly. Uh, most lithium ion batteries, you can kill them within a year and a half. Simplify is a lithium ion battery, but it's a lithium ion iron phosphate battery that has a proprietary uh, design that prevents it from thermal runaway, the formation of uh, dendrites, and other things that reduce the life of a lithium ion battery. Now by thermal runaway, can you put that into more plain English? Well, thermal runaway mm -hmm. is a condition where the lithium ion battery, due to wear and tear of mm -hmm. high amp charge discharge uh, mm -hmm. cycles, mm -hmm. it suffers an internal breakdown which can result in a short or conductivity within the, the lithium ion battery resulting in a potential fire, yep. which is thermal runaway, which you've seen with mm -hmm. some of these smartphones, uh, batteries that were carried in airplanes, things like mm -hmm. that. Um, that's, a, that's a serious situation. Yes. And uh, we don't recommend lithium ion batteries lightly. Uh, so in our selection of the Simplify battery, the thermal runaway fire safety issue was, I, I, it was paramount. Mm -hmm. Right Absolutely. there with depth of discharge. It's great if we can cycle all the time, but if it's a fire hazard, we don't want it, that liability on ourselves. We certainly don't want to do that to our customers. Yeah. And, and it doesn't help the industry one eensy-weensy little bit when uh, there was that infamous Kahuku fire. That, that's, I don't know how many years that set back the whole storage battery industry because that made national news. 
Well, there was a chemistry problem, and it was a <laughs> known chemistry problem. All batteries, other than pump storage, uh, rely on chemical reactions. And when you're imposing high amperage, re repetitive cycles on, a, on chemistry, you have to make sure that chemistry is designed to meet that over that load mm -hmm, situation. Mm -hmm. And frankly, there hadn't been enough research done from what I could see that they had taken that into account. We test relentlessly mm -hmm, mm -hmm. before we sell. And as a result, the systems we put in, um, be it lead acid or uh, Sony lithium ion, uh, cobalt manganese, or which we have done, or iron phosphate or salt water, we customize the design to the charge discharge capability of the chemistry to the discharge charge loading profile of the load and the recharging source. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That tells you that phrase, a four letter word describes that phrase, math. Mm -hmm. Lots of math mm -hmm. with a lot of variables that are unique to a particular situation. And if you don't do that, you invite a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And maybe a good analogy of test, test, test is when a new plane comes off the out of the factory, those guys don't say, oh, here it is out of the factory. Let's load up our passengers and take off here. I just can't imagine how much testing there is of a plane. And while testing batteries isn't the same life-death situation, it is potentially a very serious situation. And these the customers have put a lot of money into this thing. They don't want to have it conk out three months down the road. Right, yeah. and yeah. simplified batteries, uh, a 3.4 kilowatt hour battery is going to cost you around $3,000 plus for mm -hmm. one battery. Mm -hmm. um, Therefore, to recapture that value, um, you must use that battery regularly. Mm -hmm. Whether you're using the Tesla wall or uh, the, the Blue Ion, Sony battery, or LG, or Samsung, um, in most cases, those are being designed as backup, where the battery mm -hmm. is hardly ever used. And the chemistry in those batteries lend itself well to backup, not mm -hmm. daily heavy discharge. Mm -hmm. um, if you subject those technologies to heavy daily discharges, they, they won't last that long. You'll be lucky to be at 80% capacity mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in a year and a half. It'll probably be much lower than that. Simplify, <coughs> on the other hand, um, can do 100% that the discharge, it comes with a rating spec from the factory at 10,000 cycles. So a single cycle a day is over 27 years. Mm -hmm. Um, that's crazy good yeah. for yep, a lithium yep. ion iron phosphate battery. Um, the other thing about Simplify is their customer base is, has burn tests proved them in, and that's primarily DOD. The Marines uh, have been heavy users of Simplify batteries in the worst of conditions. Uh, did they put them out in, the, in Battlefront? Or oh, battle, yeah. Battlefield These are in yeah. rough, rugged, isolated conditions. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to their website, they sell a lot of mobility stuff. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, for field construction sites and things like that. Of course, military units using it for whatever mission, it's a portable source of power that mm -hmm. um, is hard to beat. Mm -hmm. So Simplify has a revenue base that was, that's better than a lot of their competitors because they meet mil spec. They're yeah. out there on DOD jobs. Yeah, and, you know, think, think of them on the front lines of Afghanistan, uh, Syria, whatever. Yeah. And that uh, brings up another point where in the early days of the Afghan war, they were still using oil as a power source. They had to, I won't describe how they had to get it up there, but the oil by the time, a barrel of oil by the time it got to the remote hills of Afghanistan, I think was over $1,000 a barrel. Yep. Well, when you're under fire too, your mm -hmm. convoys are under fire, and you got to pay <laughs> yeah. all these guys big bucks to... To drive those trucks, mm -hmm, yeah, I, mm -hmm. I can see that would really, yeah, yeah. without even processing it, just transporting it was mm -hmm. a problem. But Simplify has come up with a superior design. Um, their marketing strategy of getting getting it mil spec and into the DoD 
means that they are now have a, a, a strong revenue base that sustains mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. with which to begin uh, moving into the the residential commercial private market yeah. so you you can scale all the way from residential a single family home all the way up to what what's an example of a large uh, customer well you can do that with almost anybody's battery mm -hmm. but again the math that's involved to design and make sure that what you're doing is going to work and then when you go from residential now we're not dealing with small motor inrush currents that are single phase when we get up to commercial, we're dealing with 208 or 483 phase. Now, those batteries by themselves may not be the best solution. Mm -hmm. So we're a little different in that we design uh, power electronics interfaces and controls where we may combine two or more storage technologies and the same power electronics so it's like you're protecting the batteries from high motor inrush current. You're having mm -hmm. that absorbed by capacitors or a flywheel mm -hmm. or a motor generator. Mm -hmm. And once that surge has passed, it hands it off to the lithium ion batteries, the simplified Ooh, batteries. Yeah. So yeah. it's an elegant, cost-effective solution where your power quality, your, the variations in your load are all accommodated. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I, I like analogies here. It might be... A uh, good analogy might be a, a really good front bumper system on a car where if you hit something at, say, five miles an hour, if there weren't a good bumper there, boom, you're, you're going to have some pretty serious damage. But the bumper is designed such as to be a cushion and absorb that energy. And the same with the technologies you're talking about here. They absorb that inrush of current and then the battery, once it's smoothed out, then the battery can take over. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It's a mm -hmm. shock absorber because when a, a three-phase motor starts up, even if it's under variable speed or variable frequency control, if you have enough of them cycling at the same time, or you, you could get this inrush current, which also makes that your demand charge rate higher with utilities, so you yep, pay yep, thousands yep. of dollars more mm -hmm. for those. So the shock absorber takes care of that spike so the utility never mm -hmm. sees it. It never damages your equipment or your storage. It's all handled by the design of the power electronics of the batteries and the software. Mm -hmm. And we need to take a break very shortly, but when we come back, I want to get your perspective on the future of storage batteries in Hawaii because we have become a test bed in many ways, and the mainland looks to us. So let's uh, talk about that when we get back, and then we'll get into SunTrack. Take a break. This is Howard Wig Code Green with the Honorable Nick Dizon. We will be back in a moment. Aloha and Happy New Year. It's 2017. Please keep up with me on Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and just energy future. Please join me on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Mahalo. Hey, Stan the Energy Man here. Join me every Friday here at Think Tech Hawaii where I bring up to speed on all things new and exciting in the world of energy in Hawaii, especially hydrogen, my favorite thing, hydrogen. I can always talk about hydrogen. You probably wonder what Stan the Energy Man does when his batteries are low and he's out of energy. That cabin you see in the background is where I go and run away to. That's on the big island up on, in Hamakua, and I'm building a cabin up there so I can go up and just kind of commune with nature. And that's where I was this past weekend, listening to cows and pigs and pheasants and birds and turkeys and just collecting my energy. So if you want to look at some of your own energy, join me on Fridays with Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii on my lunch hour, and we'll fill your batteries up too. Aloha. Good afternoon again. Howard Wig, Code Green, the Honorable Nick Dizon, and I are get, getting totally absorbed in batteries such that we didn't show the battery photos. So what, is, so what in the world is this here, Nick? No. Yeah, this is a parallel array of eight Simplify batteries. I believe these are the 2.4 kilowatt hour batteries going to a Sunny Isle um, in a battery inverter. So this is like a typical residential installation. And the nice thing about it is uh, these batteries are capable of up to 80 amps per battery. So that's four times 80 amps of that's immediately so. available mm -hmm. DC power. Yeah, so that's more than you need in a typical residence. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Same thing with this one here. It's a, it's a similar uh, setup. 
as you can see, it's set up in an all-weather NEMA 3, and uh, it's outdoor. Mm -hmm. And then we got one more. Yeah, this is more of a commercial setup where you have, mm -hmm. uh, looks like, uh, three Outback 8,000-watt inverters in parallel. So this is more of a commercial. This may be a 208 or 483 phase solution. Those are the 3.4 kilowatt hour batteries back there. Mm -hmm. um, again, very, you can see it's uh, very compact size-wise. Yeah, yeah. So the energy density, the amount of space you have to take up, it, this is a very friendly design. So in my, just to look at the larger picture for a moment, I read all kinds of energy related materials, as you can imagine, and the word storage, 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 smart grid, small grid, and in my mind, these grids that are largely offline or completely offline, they absolutely positively must be accompanied by, batteries are an integral component of these smart grids. So, so how does that work in, in a real tight nutshell? Well, the, you're exactly correct. You have to have energy storage. Mm -hmm. But what's limiting widespread adoption of energy storage in both residential mm -hmm. commercial, not only in Hawaii, but worldwide, is the ability to do the math to design. That mm -hmm. training, that education, which spans chemistry, physics, electrical energy, there are multiple disciplines involved to design mm -hmm. this, and there is no school that you can go mm -hmm. to that mm -hmm. teaches that. Yeah. Um, we're, we have our own training program, so we're teaching mm -hmm. that, but it's not easy to learn, and that's why batteries have not taken off, because we think of batteries as being as easy to use as in a flashlight. Well, in a home or a business, it's much more complex than that. Mm -hmm. And if you're interconnected with the utility, it's even more mm -hmm. complex. Mm -hmm. So that level of understanding yeah. is not widely out there yet. Yeah, I introduced you as being not just cutting edge, but the tip of the spear. And I think <laughs> this is a, a perfect, perfect example of that. But we can expect batteries, 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 batteries in the near term and in the longer term. And I think we can also expect a lot of uh, mishaps. You know, this type of battery does work, this one doesn't work, and some people are going to fold. Yeah, and, yeah. and I mean, it happened to Aquion, and, but I think it was more of a marketing problem. We explained to them over a year ago that if they didn't set up a training program, we called it mm -hmm. the University of Aquion to teach mm -hmm. people how to mm -hmm. use their batteries, that that would be a problem. But that's true for Simplify, uh, Samsung, LG, Mm -hmm. Right now, um, Tesla is taking the bull by the horns by selling this, this complete system, um, which works, especially if it's only battery backup and you minimize the amount of discharge that it does. It will work, mm -hmm. but it won't be cost effective yet. Mm -hmm. The only way to be cost effective is an ROI that's less than five to seven years. Yep, yep. And on that cheery note, let's get to your next technology, SunTrack. <coughs> And here are some guys on the roof. What in the world are these guys doing here? Well, uh, several years ago, this solar air conditioning, solar cooling th uh, mm -hmm. theory came about. And it actually does work. What you're doing is you're taking the refrigerant that's coming out of the compressor and you're heating Which it up. Yeah, it's, it's hot to begin with, isn't it? Right. Yeah. So okay. what you're doing is you're the, com the, the refrigerant coming from the compressor goes into a solar panel effectively and the goal of that is to have the intelligence of the system realize at the condenser side that the, the, the heat and pressure coming in is such that it tells the compressor to slow down mm -hmm. or drop mm -hmm. its stages of operation. Yeah, be because the sun is doing a lot of that work. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. in the morning, you don't have the sun yet. The mm -hmm. compressor starts to work. It does mm -hmm. it. As the sun comes up, these panels start heating up the, the, the refrigerant line. And now the condenser intelligence passes around to the rest of the inverter base system that, mm -hmm. hey, I, I, I don't need, you know, the temperature is good. We can yeah. back off the operation of the compressor. That's mm -hmm. in the easiest, that's the easiest way to explain it. Mm -hmm. And so, so what's going on with our, our slide here now? Well, this here is a SunTrack solar panel. Now, this uses concentrated solar. These are, there are troughs in there, long six-foot troughs mm -hmm. that have a, 
that track the sun. There's a stereo photo eye there that tracks the sun, and then there's refrigerant lines that are running down the middle of these troughs. So the original idea that came out was vacuum tubes, but vacuum mm -hmm. tubes leak over time. They just, mm -hmm. they just that mismatch material, diurnal heating, it's, it's just troublesome. This, on the other hand, is very, very simple. So are these individual, we see, what, six panels here, do each individual panel track the sun? Correct. W within, within the, yeah. So we, these are angled mm -hmm. towards the south, mm -hmm. and they are designed to track the sun. Mm -hmm. So usually uh, by around, if we turn the AC on at 8 o'clock, by 9.30, this thing's having an impact. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing up to a 40% decrease of amperage go, going to Ooh. the compressor. 40%? That's, that's, that's uh, substantial because in many buildings and even in many centrally air-conditioned homes, the air conditioner is the prime energy user. The number one energy user in the state of Hawaii is air conditioning, yeah. followed by refrigeration. Um, the thing about it is a 32 square foot panel, which is what this is, mm -hmm. is the equivalent of, of almost 250 square feet of PV. Ooh. So, of course, it's also more efficient to do mm -hmm, thermal mm -hmm. to thermal versus electrical to thermal. Mm -hmm. So, there's a huge space savings on the roof. Ooh. There's mm -hmm. an efficiency gain, right? Wow. And then the other thing about this is it's interesting is SunTrack, you know, if you go to a fairly new Mitsubishi or Fujitsu split that's been in for two, three years, uh, this doesn't ruin the warranty. In fact, it, mm -hmm. The warranty from SunTrack covers the entire air conditioner for another five years. Because you're using the air conditioner less and you're not forcing it to go, go up to max. Correct. Generally. Yeah. So the, the, the wear and tear mm -hmm. on the compressor is cut down, but you are cutting into the refrigerant circuit of, a, of let's say, an existing or brand new air conditioner. Mm -hmm. And SunTrack went far in their warranty work to make sure that they could warranty an entire system. So we're looking at doing systems that are beyond their warranty. They're like mm -hmm. six, seven years old. They are, they are running an R410A. Uh, they are inverter based. They do have intelligence. And we piggyback these systems in and mm -hmm. an air conditioner that didn't have warranty now has five years. Yeah, it's uh, what reminds me of, say you have a car and the car's first owner is a teenage male and <laughs> if you remember your teenage male driving as i remember my teenage male driving you're giving that car a pretty gosh darn good workout mm -hmm. and if you don't crash thank goodness i don't know if you crashed i didn't I don't know why but it's you're really driving that car hard now the boy goes off to college the car gets sold to a little old lady in tennis shoes who just basically goes to the supermarket and to her grandkids and to church. And she drives it very, very gently. So the before in the air conditioner might be, it's going up and down, going to its max. Now it's more like being driven by that little old lady in tennis shoes. Correct, yeah. and, uh, and, and it has an actual warranty backing mm -hmm. it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In addition to that, it qualifies for the federal solar tax credit. Ooh. So mm -hmm. the uh, return on investment on this thing yeah. is less than two and a half years. How about the state tax credit? We mm -hmm. actually are hiring an attorney mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. see if the state tax credit will apply. Hmm. I don't know why it wouldn't apply. Because it's in, using in the same, the language, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. The, the PV solar credit applies to it, so we, mm -hmm. we would hope that the state would apply yeah, to it. You too. Know, I, many, many years ago when the solar fans first came out, you know, PV with a fan in the middle and it exhausts the attic air, I worked with the tax department and got a credit for it. Right, so, I took benefit because I put one on and I got that tax mm -hmm, credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah so many I recall people that. did, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, now let's do one last slide and then go into more generic. Now, what are you, it looks like you're trying to, to market this thing, and what's this uh, Mitsubishi uh, business here? Right, now, yeah. we actually, we're looking to do uh, air conditioning, uh, the DC side, like mm -hmm. what uh, a lot of other companies have been doing and at the schools. Uh, so we took a look at those, but the variations in the design and the models and the parts were too mm -hmm. wide. 
Um, meanwhile, we've been taking houses off grid since 2014 that were running Mitsubishi splits. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. frankly, you just can't be more energy efficient yeah. than a yeah. Mitsubishi split. Mm -hmm. So we actually partnered up with Craig Zare, and it was Craig Zare Conditioning that actually uh, had me check out these SunTrack Solar. Mm -hmm. but when he first called me up about it, I was like, nah, I don't want to do that. But mm -hmm. I went and saw it was concentrated solar with uh, those troughs, mm -hmm. uh, so there's nothing to leak, very little to break. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, electrically, we're running on 24 volts DC, and we're, you know, other than chopping into the refrigeration circuit and adding five pounds of charge, we're not that invasive. It's mm -hmm. very low-hanging fruit, simple mm -hmm. stuff. And it can scale up to chiller plants. So we can mm -hmm. do splits, we can do package units, and we can scale up to chiller plants. Imagine a you know, a 200 ton chiller plant where we're cutting the energy by 40%. That is a major, major cut. And what comes to immediately, mind immediately, is schools. We're cooling the schools, but I don't think that would work because schools have so few uh, operating hours a year. Most of the time, it's just the system would just be sitting there do, doing nothing. You wouldn't need to cool it. Well, during the summer months, that's true. Mm -hmm. uh, I would s submit to you that um, if we have more PV and these kind of systems at schools, maybe now multi-state uses could be garden, mm -hmm. you know, create mm -hmm. more value out of these schools for the DOE or for the state. That gets into a more a creative yeah. area yeah. above yeah. my pay grade. Mm -hmm. But the thing about it is, is it gives you the opportunity to more more heavily utilize your facility Precisely. without costing you a lot. Yeah. Now, in a business, if you're cutting your costs down on air conditioning and your business is open from 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 5 p.m. 365 days a year. That's yep. right. Yep. Now yep. your yep. energy savings will really start kicking in. And, mm -hmm. of course, you get accelerated depreciation as well. Mm -hmm. And we're just about to leave, but final phrase, track record, this technology has a track record? Yes, it's been around for about three years. It's mostly mm -hmm. been on the mainland. Only in the past several months has it been brought here. So we're actually, Craig and I are like driving this locally. Mm -hmm. And I might point out that air conditioning is a bigger and bigger slice of the energy pie because as LEDs come online, they're getting better and better. The controls are great. So lighting used to be a big slice of the energy pie. It's getting smaller, smaller, smaller. So this is the opportunity to get that AC slice of the pie. That's smaller, the big one. Smaller, That's smaller. the big one. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So on that cheery note, we're just getting warmed up, so to speak. But we must say bid fond adieu again. Think Tech Hawaii, code Green Howard Wig, with my esteemed guest, Nick Dizon, president of Nidon Energy, Clean Energy. Back next time. Thank you very much, Nick. Thanks, sir.